As we anticipate the commencement of a new leadership in Nigeria, tonight we'll take a look at the changing political environment and uh, the effects on the insurance industry. And Labour Party condemns invasion and occupation of party secretariat in Oweri. We will be discussing with members of the party in a more state and uh, we'll be talking on the crisis and plans for the primaries. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. As Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria prepares for the commencement of a new administration. The changing political atmosphere may have affected various sectors of the economy. Coupled with ethnicity, tension, religion and quest for validity of various parties, one sector which may have been notably affected is the insurance industry. One of the most notable highlights of the industry in 2022 was the increase in third-party motor insurance pol policy rates by the National Insurance Commission, NICOM, the apex regulator, on 22nd of December 2022. Now, joining us to discuss this live, uh, the effects of the changing environment uh, will have on Nigerian insurance is uh, Mr. Ebose Augustin Osega, CEO Anchor Insurance, and the insurance man of the year. Good evening and welcome to the Good program. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Yeah. What does that even mean? Insurance man of the year. Tell us a little bit. Why do you think uh, you got to this apex? You got to this point where you were recognized by the body uh, of uh, this award giving uh, body. You were in the same um, room with the governor receiving awards, you know, on the same day and all that. So, how does it feel and how did you get here? Well, um, um, first and foremost, um, I want to thank you very sincerely for inviting me this evening. You see, when you, when you are working and you try to do the best you can in life, you don't know people are watching you. Um, we have started our... Uh, we, I came into the insurance from a humble beginning. And then we try to see uh, what we can do to any living. Mm -hmm. We're never looking at going to the APS <laughs> on top of, of the ladder. Mm -hmm. But just for survival. But why you do that? Now you find out that this is something you could do. And uh, the interest comes to come, especially when you see that um, the live, you are in a living and the life is becoming very, um, and the opportunities are there for the take. Then what you do is to grab opportunity. So that's how we find ourselves. And then you walk in and people are recognizing you mm -hmm. and see what you are doing and say, this man is doing this something differently. But you could, sometimes you ask yourself, what am I doing differently? <laughs> I said the award is just coming in. I was at home, and um, somebody called me. and I said, I saw your name on the internet that uh, you've been up, you've, you were nominated as the uh, CEO uh, of the year on insurance category. I said, really? I thought it was fake until I got a call, and, uh, and that was it. They will thank God for that, and I also thank my organization for giving me that opportunity to do so. Okay, well, everything we do in life is tied to some kind of politics because... Um there is policy that needs to be made by the people, the policy makers who eventually are politicians most of the time and all that. And so we are, we are really concerned. When we think about revamping the, the Nigerian spirit, the Nigerian nation, the people of Nigeria, we think about all the sectors. Today, eventually, we're talking to the insurance uh, company CEO of the year, insurance CEO of the year. Now, my concern is, and I've had this concern for some time now, in a country like ours, where everything is not my portion, you know what I mean. Yeah. You tell someone to do insurance for the car, not my portion. You are telling me I will get accident, it will not happen to me, and all that. There seem over the years to be um, this attitude of our people to drag their feet when it comes to insurance. They just want to survive by God's mercy and all that. So how are you finding our society, you know, how is the response to having insurance policies, joining the, the train of people who recognize the importance of insurance and all that in Nigeria? Uh, well, um, sometimes, you know, we talk about culture. Um, the Nigerian state, as it, as it takes, or the Nigerian people, mm -hmm. these countries, us, we're all Nigerians. The insurance, Nigerian insurance industry is in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. 
we are not different from ourselves. The attitude of insurance has to do with the way our economy um, evolved. If you go to countries like Botswana, uh, Namibia, you find out that the, the rate and the penetration of insurance there is higher than in Nigeria. Meanwhile, we have a higher population. Mm. We have more resources, we have more awareness in terms of human capacity. But you find out that the insurance penetration in this country is very low. I think that's what do with government uh, legislation. Um, if you want anything in the country, just within our family cycle, there's a tendency you want your family. This is how I want my children to look when they grow up. Mm. Then your nurturing should tend towards that um, aspect of uh, uh, development. I want my kids to be doc medical doctors when they grow up. I wanted to have this kind of discipline. But the Nigerian government, when this issue of insurance came, or when the insurance um, uh, was introduced to this country, they didn't, we didn't accept it like the way we accepted banking. But if we even look at banking, for example, you find out that a lot of people are not even um, um, putting money in the bank, uh, uh, banking, uh, keeping mm. their money safe in the bank. The reason is that we find out that when we're doing the cash, when the cashless policy was introduced during the last um, about a month ago, we find out that a lot of people have more money outside the banking system. Yeah. That's how insurance is. It's our culture. And the government should do more by making the deliberate plan to say, we okay. must have insurance. Okay, we, 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 we will come to what the government will do. But what is the insurance sector itself? What are the insurance companies doing to carry this awareness to the people? Because there's been this argument that the insurance companies like the ignorance of the people. For instance, uh, a lot of people who even have this insurance don't know what they need to do in the case of, uh, where they should go claim their rights and all that. I give you an instance. On the streets of Lagos, most times we see traffic, not because of anything, but because somebody somewhere has crashed someone, a thing that they sh could have just put a call through maybe to an insurance company, give evidence and do all the things that they're supposed to do and claim whatever they need to claim. I don't know so much about insurance, but I think there is insurance that, that, that if you are in a tight situation, the insurance company bails you out. That's a layman's way of explaining it. But our people do not even know, even when they have this insurance. So people have argued that the insurance companies are happy that if you are supposed to cash out, permit the word, and you are not able to go because you don't know your rights, they make the money and you stay ignorant. So how are you, what are you doing to debunk that? What are you doing to educate the people so that people don't, will not see you as people who are comfortable with, we, with us being ignorant? How does the ignorance benefit insurance company? That's Their money will still remain in your coffers. No, that's ridiculous. Use. If the people live in ignorance, how do you even develop the economy? Insurance itself is supposed to be the subsector that will prepare the growth of an economy in the country. Mm. So why are we going to show ignorance to people mm. that, are you sure those people who had a car, uh, who mm. had that accident, mm. the cars were insured? You know, we, so sometimes we just believe that the insurance company, the workability of the insurance company, or the functionality of the insurance company is a, yes, is, is a, mere, a mere word. The people just say them because it don't face reality. I'm very sure you that he's talking to me, whether you have insurance policies that you have that you have been turned down when you have claims. The ignorance, because if the world lives in ignorance, what, why, the essence of us going to school is to cure ignorance. So why do you not want to get educated or you go to school to study but, insurance but or you set up an insurance company? But do you do anything, people to be aware because do you you do have anything deliberately to educate them? No, what comes first? Is it the claim? Or someone doesn't even know he needs to claim, <laughs> claim that. Well, we have done, yeah. no, uh, uh, um, on a more serious note, yeah. we have, the insurance company in the last um, five years, mm. or last ten years, I would say, has done very well in terms of trying to educate the Nigerian populace okay. to take up insurance policies. Um, I'm very sure you see a lot of media attention. Um, even the NHIS, during, especially during the time of Obasajor's government, when, when it raised up the standard that look, every policies, every household in this country should have an insurance policy. Even Lagos State government, that any building that has a copier liability, that has a, a story building off the floor, must have insurance. And if you want to build, if you want to have any property uh, construction, 
you must have a con uh, CR, which is called construction or risk, before you can even commence those policies. Those mm -hmm. things are in, in, uh, in practice. But just that the ignorance that you talk about, no, nobody has gone to say, how does this work? And you okay. see most educated people, because uh, insurance policy, you talked about people say, oh, God, our life is in the hands of God. Mm. They don't go to do. Any, they don't do anything about it. But when issues come up, they blame insurance company. Oh, I'm yeah. not aware. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Oh. They believing, not believing that the policies of insurance is for the benefit of the few, of the few. You don't expect to put insurance policy. Somebody, let me tell you something very, very um, important. Somebody came to me one day and said, "Look, I insure a car, and this, my my policy expired in the next few days." I have no hard claim. Can I have my money back? Mm. It's part of the ignorance we talked about. Yeah. People don't look at policies. People don't take time to look at issues. It's the cultural awareness or the tradition of our country that we're always believing that things do, do not matter. And it's always a problem. You know, it's also akin to the theory of uh, uh, Socrates where he said, man, know thyself. Yeah. Once we recognize your environment, even medical checkup, a lot of people don't go for it. Yeah, okay. I, I needed to get that out because when we begin to talk about what the government needs to do, we need also to know what we have done or what we plan to do. And in this case that we were talking about is the insurance uh, companies, the insurance sector. The, so we needed to know that. Now we are going to have a new government come May 29th. And we need to shape the policies that make our people behave the way they, sh they, they behave and change a direction of doing things. Now, in the past, insurance uh, companies, insurance sector, uh, how do I call it, may have suffered a few things because of policies of government. We'd like to know what kind of policies you look forward to being put by the next administration that will make the insurance sector to thrive and the people of Nigeria to benefit. Yeah, thank you very much. Before I answer your question, let me go to, because you asked a question, what the insurance company has been doing mm -hmm. in terms of trying to have this penetration. We, the insurance company, as a matter of, um, we've gone to the National Assembly to make sure that um, there is legislation, deliberate one, mm -hmm. to make sure that every person in this country have one form of insurance or the other. And we have also, as either individually or um, um, togetherly, gone out to say, look, there's advert on radio, a jingle, newspaper advert, like what I'm doing here today. It's part of creating that awareness within the insurance space. Personally, I call insurance. We, if you go to, to CNN and other stations, you'll find out that we have a lot of um, uh, commercial, all for people to get awareness, to understand. We don't have it insurance here. Part. Yes, because, because you have not insured, you have not decided to insure your 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 office. Is a do me or do you think, right? So <laughs> if okay. do me or do you think, then we talk about that yeah. after this time. Out. Okay, go so ahead. these are some of the things that we are doing. The insurance company, especially the, the present commission of insurance, has really done so much. And especially the NI, the chairman of NI, the present one, we are doing a whole lot in terms of try to educate our people to understand that insurance is all that we need. And it's even more uh, reasonable to have insurance than even bank. Because when you have issues, it's insurance that comes to to, that puts you back to the state you were before your, your, your loss. Then coming to uh, the new government that is coming to power, or what, what we expect to see, mm. everybody in this country is, what is the essence of government? It's to provide security and happiness. But for me, happiness is much more of it. Because if you are happy, that means there is security, the environment is okay, the, um, the, 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 administ the process or the administration of that same economy is okay. The culture of the people is evolving. Uh, everybody, everything around is there's functionality of the of the state and functionality of the system. The the this present government for me to them is the coming government is first. You must create that economic broad economic base where every economic economic functionalities uh, are are working. The 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 the, the, the banking, the agricultural. Uh, sector, the oil and gas, that there should be more openness and transparency in terms of how we deal with the people. You cannot, and the exchange rate for, is, for, is, for example, if I tell you the losses we have made in terms of insurance, how much money we have spent in terms of trying to do our security in terms of our insurance abroad. Imagine what the, the exchange rate is and what you have here, um, the dollar exchange rate, we have to insure abroad 
uh, the, the lawyers and other uh, uh, companies abroad. Because some of the uh, policies we cannot keep here, all but that we seem not having much of that solvency in terms of paying those uh, heavy risks when they, when they come. You have to take them abroad. And imagine what that would cost us. If you have a policy that is about uh, $3,000, for example, and how much money will you translate to have that? And if you come back to say, you talk about the third party increment, mm. the claims that comes from third party, if I tell you, you'll be wondering, how are you, why are you saying that the insurance company, that the, the, the populace are not aware about insurance policy? It's like people like you that are not aware or who refuse to know because you refuse to benefit from insurance. But I am telling you, Nigerians are actually coming out to understand that insurance workability, not just the workability, is functional. So we take it that those people who resort to fisticuffs on the road are people who may not have insurance policies. They may, they may not have insurance policies, or even when they have insurance policies, you know, no matter how educated you are, you, maybe you're going somewhere and there are, there are hindrances. You also come to react. There's a random human reaction to say, oh, you hit my car, I have to park, you have to exchange addresses and all that. It's about, about civility. Mm -hmm. To understand that, look, if I have a policy, I don't need to quarrel over anything. All you need to do is call an insurance company. Mm -hmm. We pay claims every day. Mm -hmm. Every day we pay claims. During the um, uh, cashless uh, issue that we have in the country, the claims that are earned from the, even the estimated value is over, over 20 billion. Interesting. You, you mentioned about um, interaction with the National Assembly uh, yes. regarding some policies that need to be put in place and all that. How far is that? And how far do you intend to take uh, this advocacy to them, uh, especially the 10th Assembly that is coming? Well, but the, the, the outgoing Assembly, I know that has passed second reading. Um, I don't know where it is at the moment, but it has passed second reading. Maybe when it reconvey, it will pass. But it's our hope that this uh, night Assembly we pass that to law, we, we, we do it away with it so that the president can sign to law before they leave office. But if that does not happen, uh, the incoming president is, um, is somebody who has also introduced um, policies of assurance in Lagos State, even when he was uh, the governor of Lagos State, which this, the administration of Lagos State is still carrying on. I hope um, that also extends to the federal um, uh, state so that we can have these robust uh, assurance policies where there are policies deliberately by government to ensure that insurance policy like what is done to banking, the BVN, is a, uh, is we come to preach that even if it must all sound like a broken record, that these policies are things that must be inherent. Because um, if what you give is what you get. If you do not insure, you do not have anything to, to fall back on. Insurance is something that brings ultimate happiness, even when you make losses. Even when you lose your loved ones, your life doesn't have to stop. You know, when you have life policies, your life doesn't have to stop. If you have an educational plan for your children, even when you go, the insurance will come, come very handy. And this is what has brought happiness to many homes. But unknown to a lot of persons, they just feel that insurance is not something that works. But it's, I'll tell you, my brother, it's something that works so much that even me as an insurance person, I have benefits. Recently, I had, I had uh, my car accidented, and it was fixed without... Uh, um, without any, any, any question. And these are the, some of the things we, we want, also want to encourage Nigerians, that this administration that is coming in, should, should, the National Assembly, will take the National Assembly, they should come out and talk, and talk about um, uh, insurance, not just talking about it for the sake of insurance. But funny enough, let me tell you something. The, national, the insurance company has a way, they, they, they have remunerations developing the economy because we also contribute. We pay taxes, we do all sort of. Imagine all insurance, 240 million Nigerians have one form of policy or the other. And for every return that goes back to government, it's about 1%. Imagine how much the government will raise from insurance policies for the development, even taxes that come from insurance company. Now, this year, we've, we've crossed about 780 billion premium income for 2022. 20, uh, mm. You can imagine the amount of. of uh, uh, Taxes, either VAT or normal taxes, are going, additional tax that will come from insurance policies. The more, the more policies we have, the more robust the economy will be. Insurance sector is also be the, like the like subset of the economy where people don't put them away. If you go to that part of the country, even Togo here, if you do not have insurance, you don't have thoroughfare. In terms of your driving, in terms of your policies, if that, even going to the bank. Mm. 
Okay, well, uh, they say our economy is in bad shape. We wouldn't know. Some of us who are not economists know that, but we do know that life is not very easy with us. So we are attributing that to the economy. Now, the incoming administration will have to do a little bit of a shake here and there for the economy to thrive. If you were to advise the incoming government, what would you say? Well, uh, for me, um, as an insurance practitioner, uh, insurance should be encouraged. Because let me tell you what the issue is. Most of the issues we have is the recurrent expenditures that, that comes, things that you have done. You go back redoing them after the other. I'm not talking about salary, I'm talking about. Imagine the house of a government government, and you have to go to another budgetary allocation to build it again. When you ha can push your hand to your insurance pool, insurance uh, in, uh, companies and ask them for, uh, for, for claims, I, I don't want to mention the state. I traveled one time, I went to, I got to the state and I saw the government building, very dilapidated. I was asking why I said it was fire outbreak that happened sometimes in, um, in January. And I asked why I was in office. Luckily enough, I was going to have a meeting with the, uh, with the excellency of the state, the governor of the state. And I, when I met him, I said, sir, I'm here to discuss insurance with you, but I'm coming, something touched me that I felt so bad. And the governor is very educated, who understands insurance. Even some of them read abroad, who understand the policy of insurance. That even before you go to any university, you must have insurance policy for you to study, for you to adapt life policy within the school, the school domain. And I asked the excellency, I said, why is that building lying fallow? He said, because um, the National Assembly, they have to come out to the main budget, supplementary budget for them to build by the place. I said, that was wrong. The policy, what you will spend to do that, it's going to be much more higher than the amount of money that was used to build it because the building was there a long time ago. But it's something that you just insured and pay some certain amount of money. All insurance company needs to do, all you need to do is to inform your insurance company, my house is on fire. In three weeks or four weeks, you will see that house standing back. Interesting. Well, uh, <laughs> you've heard it, Nigerians. Uh, the next government is coming in, and we're talking about our economy. Uh, one of the things that is very worrisome is the way the economy is. We talk about security, we talk economy, we talk uh, education, and so many other things that bother us. And one of the aspects of this economy that needs to be touched, according to uh, Mr. Osega, is insurance. And everybody who is coming back or coming uh, to be at the helm of affairs should take it really seriously so that our economy can grow. So let's just assume that you are having this meeting with um, all the governors and uh, the president uh, or that is coming in, the people that are coming in. Just tell them as a final word what they need to do, specifics of things that they need to do in as uh, long as or as short as two minutes. Uh, for me, um, they need to look at the culture of the society look at the administrative process of the country, restructuring in terms of restructuring the, the economic um, indices, and also be very keen to look at, um, to look at the, geography, the geography. When I mean geography, I mean places. If you have the north, you have more agriculture. If you come to the south, a lot of crops grow. We are so blessed in this country that there are so much resources. Then you talk about economic homogeneity. What I'm talking about, the cage analysis, that, that should be the, the basis of which this, gov this government, my advice, they should operate so that we can have this homo economic homogeneity. Because if that happens, there's improvement in economic, uh, in love, insecurity, um, development, infrastructure development, all those things will take place. We should look inward and do away with uh, the idea that uh, I don't want to build on what other government. There are many things this government have done that are very beautiful mm -hmm. that you have to look into and say, okay, no matter how it is, there's only to set up in another foundation that when you're not complete the foundation, they already have. So this is better. You look at where we're coming from, where we are, where we are going. You see, the, the, the most intriguing things about, about life itself is that you must ask some certain questions. Where, how, when? These are basic questions this government should ask before they, before they come into um, taking some decisions that will affect the populace. If we have places in Niger Delta that has to do with oil, diversification of the economy is also very, very important. Because we can only put all our eggs in one basket as a people, and begin to look at that, uh, whatever, encourage other places of education. And more so, education and infrastructure development. Education is very important. Our team use out of school um, uh, uh, children. Those issues are something we need to also address. Okay.
You know, the more development, the more infrastructure, the more education, the more insurance and more policies we want to write. So at the end of the day, we are concerned about those things. So grow all in this is this will be functionality of the economy, not one sector, but entirety of the economy, so that the populace can have peace and we come to live and enjoy this. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, we've been talking with Mr. Ebose Augustin Osega, CEO Anchor Insurance and the Insurance Man of the Year. Uh, giving us pointers how our economy can be revamped and Nigeria can move from strength to strength. We'd like to thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. And once again, congratulations for the award that you won. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we will be looking at the political embroglio in Imo State. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.